Welcome everyone. Welcome to May's Astrology and in this part of the video series that I'm putting out we are going to focus on love and relationships. I, by the way, hope you enjoy that I'm back at the same place I was at last month. This time it's not raining. I don't know, maybe maybe that old uh, saying holds true. April showers bring May, May flowers. So here we are. And uh, Let's talk about love and relationships. I do have to update you though. I will not be putting the other two videos here on YouTube because as many of you know, uh, part two was censored by YouTube last month. It was taken down and I've had to move that content over on Odyssey and BitChute. I will have the links down below. So please make sure that if you want to catch that special, special content, which is censored here on YouTube, um, on you know, career and finance, the economy, right? And also part three would be on the world at large, what's going on politically in the context of astrology for May. Uh, if you wanna make sure that you catch that, then make sure that you've subscribed and that you've activated the bell to get all notifications from me because I will be letting people know on my community page, I'll be notifying y'all whenever that is available on Odyssey and BitChute only. It's free, all you gotta do is click the link and go over there. Uh, not a big deal, okay? But that said, let's get on to um, what's going on with the energy this month on a personal, interpersonal level with our relationships. And I think that overall there's going to be a lot of energy in the personal signs, which are Aries, um, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer, okay? Very much a self-focus. And so I think that overall, you know, love is going to be, if you're, you know, dating, you're single, love is going to be very spontaneous. So even if you're in a relationship, there's going to be more spontaneity. Uh, but then as we get closer towards the end of the month, we start getting into more Taurus energy. It's going to become more serious and more stable at that time. Now, coming into this month, we've already started with our first retrograde. And as I've said in previous videos, that's going to ramp up where there's going to get to be a lot you know, layer upon layer of retrogrades so yes at the end of april coming into this month we've got pluto retrograde in capricorn then this month we're going to experience mercury retrograde things are really slowing down okay basically long story short yet at the same time there's a lot of holy shift going on uh, by the way i put out a video on eclipse season that you might want to check out so the lunar eclipse energies that we're going to be experiencing this month um, and solar right we had a solar eclipse on the 30th of, of April um, and then mid-month we'll have the lunar eclipse well these energies seem to suggest that there are themes over the next six months unfolding having to do with personal resources and values versus that of others and frankly that's kind of because that's where the nodes are in Taurus and Scorpio as I've been saying from the beginning of this year when those nodes shifted we're going to be experiencing this roughly, you know, over the next year and a half, okay? But definitely with the eclipses from April and May, what we're seeing is that over the next six months, uh, some there's some new beginning having to do with your sense of self, your values, your possessions. And mid-month with that lunar eclipse, something having to do with an ending related to others, their resources, their values. And again, it gets more specific based on where these eclipses are hitting your specific natal chart where they're transiting so uh, look that up or get a reading you know i'm doing uh, special eclipse readings for those of you who are interested and want to know i'll have the link at the end of this video so you can find out more if you want somebody to kind of give you feedback on uniquely how this is impacting your natal chart and uh, maybe give some advice for you on how to like maneuver optimally use the energies in your favor, right? That's always helpful. I also want to remind you that I am going to be slowly easing into political tarot. Uh, again, for those of you who are interested in that content, right, the political astros on BitChute, Odyssey, but on YouTube, I will be easing into more. And I don't know if y'all caught, but I recently put out some content already and I'm, I'm ramping up into that. I'm easing right, I'm a double fix, so it takes me a while. I say I'm gonna do stuff, but it, it takes me a while to transition. My Aquarian wants to transition, but my Taurus Mars and Capricorn are like, ah, we got to make sure this is solid. And so look forward to that more in the month of May. If you are interested in that, again, subscribing, hitting that bell for notifications. And I hate to beat that drum because I know you guys are hearing this ad nauseum. Unfortunately, this is what the platform, you know, encourages those of us who don't remind y'all ad nauseum. Well, unfortunately, things don't go well for us when we don't do it anyway. Moving on. So Getting into the astrology, starting the 2nd of May, 
we've got Venus and Aries, okay, all the way into May 28th. So basically, for pretty much the entire month, uh, this is bringing about, you know, new starts in love, new beginnings, at least it's, it's really helpful for that. Um, and people just with their love lives living more in the now, being more daring, and um, even just loving the, the chase and uh, the conquest. It can sometimes be a very seductive, pleasure-seeking type of energy. Um, also very impulsive energy, so. <laughs> I don't know, have fun with it, but also be cautious, you know, because um, Venus and Aries, uh, if you have that in your natal chart, you know, that's kind of somebody who they love innocently. And there's a beauty to that in a way, but there's also a danger to that in, in a way, right? There's pros and cons to everything. And we're coming out of Venus and Pisces, which is like at the total opposite end of the spectrum. Venus and Pisces loves eternally, whereas uh, Venus and Aries, you know, loves innocently. So, you know, and in my experience, people with that placement in their natal charts, they can fall in and out of love quite easily. And so, right, pick your poison. Just be aware. Just be aware of the dualities of this, this energy. Then on the third, Jupiter sextiles Pluto. And this is probably going to, in some way, motivate people to bring about some significant change in their life. Some type of improvement that maybe they desire. And great, now we've got somebody mowing. <laughs> Hopefully y'all don't hear that too bad because I've got these on. But this is going to be favorable for pursuing goals and maybe even being persuasive towards others. It's going to be good for understanding yourself better and solving some uh, problems that are long outstanding. And um, I think the downside is that, but again, this could be used for positive as well, that there's a, possibly a feeling of increased competition towards others or even within yourself. And that might cause people to open up to new approaches. Now, on the 10th, Mercury is going to go retrograde in Gemini until it'll be re it'll be Mercury will be retrograde until June 3rd. Okay, so be careful with communications, um, decisions that are being made, traveling, um, especially you know any kind of movement, communications going on in local neighborhoods, having to do with siblings, schools. You know, I I'm not talking about higher education, but mm, perhaps. Uh, more like elementary, middle, high school type stuff um, if you're engaging with schools and communication. Um, might be a time where perhaps nothing new is going on but you're rethinking some communications or interactions that happened with those kind of entities. And so in this rethinking, um, it might be that what you are reevaluating is your action on an individual level. How do you want to act in the future in regards to these people? Now Jupiter is going into Aries until October 28th, and then again, it'll go into Aries on December 20th through May 16th of 2023. I talked a bit about this at the uh, beginning of this year, how generally, roughly speaking, the first half of this year, we had Jupiter and Pisces, beautiful stuff, right? This is what we've been experiencing up until now. And then roughly the second half of the year, it's Jupiter and Aries. So what this is bringing is, uh, you know, the shift from idealism and uh, perhaps even altruism and, uh, expanding upon those thoughts okay i'm really oversimplifying it uh, you know if you want to know more go back to past videos but uh the shift into aries for jupiter is bringing about more of a focus on the self and personal initiatives and i think that we're going to be seeing this collectively uh, for a lot of people the good thing is with jupiter there it's very benefic can bring good luck fortune really is even putting a magnifying glass on stuff enlarging things so it's almost like spirit is saying hey look at this consider this all right and so what this could bring on the positive is more opportunities for each of us on the individual level to take action and in a way this is i think complementary to you know north node and taurus and the eclipses and everything that are pushing us to really step into our sovereignty and our self-sufficiency. So I think with Jupiter and Aries, some questions that maybe Spirit is trying to get us to ask ourselves is, okay, how can I take the lead in my life, take more of a leading role? Um, how can I, uh, right, how can I be the fact checker? <laughs> how can I fact check the fact checkers? Um, how can I take control of my healthcare decisions? Uh, how can I be more independent, basically? How can I attract and draw in more uh, good fortune, more prosperity for myself, regardless of others and what's going on with the government and the economy and all these things external to me? How can I write self-empowerment is really, I think, um, what this energy is putting a spotlight on and really enlarging these issues. So this would probably also be a good time considering you know mercury retrograde this month and jupiter going into aries good time to really look at how can you boost your confidence if you 
failed at something in the past, can you try again, okay? Uh, this is really an energy that is adding overall to your ability to work on self-improvement. From the third Jupiter sextile Pluto, you know, this is giving us more of a willingness to quickly seek and seize opportunities. The only, I think, word of caution about this energy is that there can be some insensitivity, perhaps, this me first attitude, uh, very inconsiderate, like it's too much self-focus, right? Um, and, and, and also perhaps maybe a lack of self-awareness or a lack of personal growth from the past failures because somebody hasn't really done that pulling back and self-honest, brutal self-honesty, you know? So see where Jupiter is transiting. Again, where is that transiting your chart uniquely? Because that's gonna reveal for you where the good fortune and happiness will likely be found for you during this transit. All right, on the 16th, this is the big deal, right? Um, we've got the full moon in Scorpio, lunar eclipse. And this is when perhaps the past is returning for some kind of revision, especially concerning shared resources, intimacy, sex, secrets uh, that maybe need to be revealed, maybe need to be released, let go of. And with the sun and Taurus during this time, that is really forcing us to find balance between, right, what's mine, what's yours. Um, ownership right ownership issues and i don't know why i'm feeling led to tell y'all that some of you need to check out uh, teal swan has a video out called how to own people and it sounds really demented now doesn't it but it's not it's it's very insightful please watch it if you've got the chance and you're interested in personal growth self-awareness healing um own people right um might be a helpful video during this time because it's talking about you know taking other people's best interest as your own, but where do we draw the line on this? How do we get some healthy boundaries on this? That video might help. I do think that around the 16th, with all this lunar energy, particularly it being uh, an eclipse, a lunar eclipse, particularly it being in a water sign, Scorpio, very deep, right? Um, it's likely that people are going to be very expressive of their emotions during this time. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, perhaps a good, good cry might do, a nice purge. Um, just beware that people might might be very rational at this time and it could be because there are circumstances that are getting exposed secrets maybe or perhaps the lunar energy is in some way illuminating unresolved issues that are quite intimate quite right in private they hit home um, issues maybe that you've been grappling with since at least November 20 of 2021 uh, when we started you know getting into uh, this clip cycle and, and frankly, will continue until October of 2023 when we finally get out of all these eclipses in Scorpio and Taurus. So think about this time frame because it, as these eclipses keep occurring over the year and a half in Scorpio and Taurus, really energetically, we are being asked to have a second go. Like if you didn't work it out last eclipse, last time there was an eclipse in that sign or the opposing sign, well, here we get another round of it. It's almost like a scrubbing, like the universe is kind of... <laughs> Let's, let's knock the dirt off of this, okay? <laughs> let's, let's do a, a good cleanse. Let's, let's get the toxins out, especially when we're talking about South Node and Scorpio. Oh, yeah. Let's get the toxins out, all right? So um, I will say on the positive that the eclipse is going to harmonize with Mars, Neptune, and Pluto. So what that means is that people will have more of a willingness to change, but the eclipse will also be squaring Saturn. So it's not going to be easy change okay there might be some restrictions limitations challenges in terms of okay well I want to make this change but how do I do this how do I make this come together and I don't know I'm already feeling that frankly um, but may maybe not a surprise because th th these eclipses are most impacting the fixed signs Taurus Leo Scorpio and Aquarius and right I'm an Aquarian Sun with the Taurus rising so yeah and you know if you've got really any 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 sign any of those signs in your chart you really want to take a look at it right like I've got three Aquarius placements so I'm feeling it and we're not even we're I'm not even in May at the time of this filming okay but we're right we're still in the thick of these these eclipses so as I said the energies emanate this has been going on since November of 2021 we'll continue into October of 2023 you're probably already feeling it <laughs> big sign or not okay how can how can we escape it now on the 20th, we've got the sun going into Gemini until June 21st. This is really good for listening, learning, 
getting out and about in your local community, good for socializing with people, you know, these face-to-face -face networking opportunities. Um, also increasing your awareness of options and having a willingness to learn about them and adapt to them. Very good. Uh, the downside of this energy is that it can make people indecisive. Maybe they've got information overload. That's a possibility. Um, it can make people double-minded, vacillating back and forth. I don't know. Should I do this? Should I do that? It's also a very logical energy, so people can start making very head over heart decisions and not really balancing out um, heart, heart head decisions, right? Or discerning when to let the heart rule, right? Um, and, you know, there could be data dumping coming out. Um, I might probably talk more about that when we get into part three, the world at large with politics. But, um, yeah, I mean, you might encounter people who are like, oh my God, did you hear about this, 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 and it? it's just overload, right? Or going on social media. And it's just, all. And, and, hey, we've already been getting into that. So many secrets coming out with these eclipses, okay, with the south node in Scorpio. But definitely, you put the sun in Gemini. Holy crap, there's a spotlight being put on information and maybe even, yes, gossip might be gossip all right then on the 21st sun conjunct mercury still retrograde but this time in you know gemini still in gemini I should say and that is just increasing people's clarity particularly on things from the past okay people are starting to maybe look at stuff like new information coming available and they're like wait a second and they're squaring it up against what they were told in the past Oh, oh, oh my gosh. See, I want to get into politics. Oh, stuff's coming to mind. Okay, I'm going to try to keep it on love and relationships, people. Oh, you got to watch that. You got to watch part two and three on Odyssey and Bitchute. All right. On the 24th, Mars and Aries. Oh, this is some fighting energy now. Uh, be aware of, you know, if you're not seeing aggression and more at least assertive behavior in your relationships, right, which has its time and place. Sometimes you do need to defend yourself. Sometimes you do need to assert yourself, okay? You need to speak up, you need to be direct. But again, when does this get into this dark zone? And yes, collectively, probably, you know, you might see some people road raging out there, just be aware around the 24th. Um, people fast moving, right? Fast action, just coming out of nowhere. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go do this. And you're like, oh, whoa, wait a second. You know, especially if you're double fixed, like you're like, hold up, wait a second. I had a plan, let's stick to the plan. And, and, and somebody just throws a curveball at you, okay? So, um, yeah, and, 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 and very also competitive energy brought up with this as well. So realize that Mars and Aries on the 24th is kind of layering on, on top of two other Aries energies with Venus and Aries, Jupiter and Aries. So um, this is a lot of poof. Just be careful with conflict, with impatience, hyper independence people i don't need anybody I, all i all i need is myself you don't need anybody you know I, I'm, i've heard some aries say that <laughs> i'm not saying all aries are like that okay but <laughs> this is this is the dark side of aries right um or overly self-concerned very egocentric um me and my four and no more you know can't see beyond your nose type stuff um only in the moment not really seeing the long term or the bigger picture uh Yes, being spontaneous, not having endurance. And there's a time and a place for everything, right? But again, the discernment of knowing when and where to practice those things. And so just be aware of that darker that darker energy coming up around the 24th because we've got three layers of Aries energy right there. Then on the 28th, Venus entering Mars until June 22nd. And this is going to be a great time if you are single and looking to partner, okay? Um, because, well... Similar to Venus in Aries, there is this desire for pleasure, for sensuality, okay? But moving into Taurus, it increases this need to have pleasure and sensuality in a stable, sustainable, secure way. Sorry, I, I, I dig that so much more. I think it's, I will blame it on my Taurus rising, you know? And so relationships during this time could become a lot more stable and secure, especially again, if you are single and looking to partner and partnership is meaningful to you, which I think is a valued system of Taurus in Taurus season. Yeah. Well, by this time we're going to have uh, the sun in Gemini, but you get me. Okay. Um, I think that this is, if you've been wanting stability and things weren't so stable at the beginning of the month, by the end of the month, you have more of a chance of things stabilizing. And um, I think also people are just generally going to be more inclined to hold on to what they love during this time. And 
expressing love towards others in a more physical and tangible, meaningful way, rather than this just kind of fly by night, passionate in the moment, uh, fiery, right? Again, time and place, no shade thrown to the Aries because y'all know I love them. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I said that last month. Y'all got to know that, right? Okay. But yes, the downside of this, I will say the downside of Venus in Taurus until June 22nd, beware of people viewing other people as objects to be owned or possessed or used and beware of people overspending to compensate for insecurity. I think with Venus and Aries, there's a uh, throwing caution to the wind with your spending, right? And I'll talk more about spending in part two, okay? But this again, this is Venus is a lot about values and nurturing things, okay? And nourishing things. And so the way that people are going about doing this, are you trying to possess people? Are you trying to treat them as objects that can be used, disposable? Caution, caution with that. And then by the 30th, the end of the month, we've got the new moon in Gemini. Beware, because during this time, we still have Mercury retrograde in Gemini until the third, right? So on one hand, it seems, you know, new moons indicate new beginnings and a great time to start something involving your local community, maybe siblings, maybe short distance travel. Uh, it also might be because this is happening again during Mercury retrograde that this new beginning involves something from the past where you are trying to reclaim something um, or trying to improve upon something, maybe your social life, maybe communications. And you might find yourself also reconsidering information that you've taken in, what you thought you knew or more information comes to light and you're reconsidering how you can practically apply this added knowledge to your everyday life and opening up to more perspectives, more facets of the whole truth, right? Not just one aspect, but this multifaceted truth, right? Looking at the wholeness of it that is unfolding all the time as we get to know people better, as we get to know this new normal better and have that hindsight with Mercury retrograde of what happened, what we thought we knew, what we were told and what was really going on. Um, and also reconsidering, I think, how much truth you, you let into your life. How much truth do others let into their life? What do they do when they are confronted with a truth that contradicts what they previously thought to be true or believed, right? I was just listening to, I think it was Gregory Manorino talking about people in the comments and that basically the cognitive dissonance. Um, we have truth unfolding every day and we are dealing with these relationships of people who are just willfully, um, they'll get angry, they'll get angry. And I can totally see this by the way, with um, Mars, all this Mars, Martian energy, you know, uh, uh, I should say also Aries. Aries is ruled by Mars. These three layers of, of Aries energy this month where people are getting angry at what they're finding out either because they're realizing, holy crap, I have been lied to you, I have been duped, I have been betrayed, or they simply cannot accept. They can't be humbled by the reality that they were deceived or that they could be deceived or the people they trusted were, you know, betrayed them. They're not ready to deal with this. So we do see a lot of people. I'm going to talk more about that in the next two videos, but I'm going to say probably the most people, the people that are going to most be affected by this new moon in Gemini on the 30th will be the mutable signs of Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. But I'm going to say also that pairing, pairing this energy with Mars and Jupiter and Aries, um, it might be that around the 30th, you decide that you're going to start something that you've been wanting to start since maybe around the 10th or the 24th of May. So that's a positive, okay? It's a time of new beginnings. And again, perhaps by the 10th through the 24th, you already know what it is you want to start and you actually start it. Uh, by the end of the month. So super positive stuff. But like I said, we've got a lot of things going on with our relationships. A lot of truths coming out this month. A lot of people getting more focused within themselves. How can I stand on my own? How can I stand within my own power? And again, some people not happy with it. Some people are feeling very angry and disempowered and pushing back. Uh, we're going to talk more about that in the next two videos. My apologies on the sound. I'm probably hearing the, the wind. <laughs> okay. But please join me for parts two and three where we talk about career, finances, money, the economy, and part three is gonna be you know, the world at large, politics. As I said before, you've gotta 
subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because I can't put it on here. It's too hot for YouTube. It's too hot for them to handle. So you gotta go find me over on Odyssey and BitChute. We'll have the links on my community page. Looking forward to connecting with y'all again. Y'all have a great month.